Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul. This is part three of the fuselage build for the St. Croix models Long Easy. When last we left, we had square corners and now we have beautiful rounded corners, as you can see. Came out really well, they look great. The trick behind it, if you, if you can look closely, you'll see a little bit of the, of the triangular stock uh, poking through, and that's good. Because what you do, you sand it at a 45 degree angle, and once you start seeing some of the stock come through, that's when you stop and then you just round off the rest of it. And you can see it gives a really nice set of rounded corners. Lay this on the side. Nice set of rounded corners, so it just looks that much better. And we also took the time to round the, the, uh, the nose cone a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. On the plans, if you look right here, it's actually supposed to be rounded that much, the, uh, the nose cone, but uh, it's okay. I, I, I like it better this way. I think it looks better. Anyway, so we got our corners rounded, and she's looking fantastic. And now we're going to go ahead. We're going to move on. The next thing is we're going to focus on getting the servo installed on our canard. And I have an idea. I think what I'm going to wind up doing is actually putting the servo right here, a thin wing servo. That way, uh, it uh, makes it a little easier to get at the servo and the controls, and I do believe it, it should fit. So anyway, food for thought of what's to come next. All right, more to come. Hi friends, as we continue our update here, Let's talk about uh, servos, if you will. So we have our canard, it's upside down, and my idea was to go ahead and to install the servo uh, directly in the center of the canard and drive it that way. But the problem is, as you can see, it's just a little too big. Uh, these lines represent the edge of the canard mounting block, so you can see that's just not gonna work. And, it's, and you'll notice here where the um, servo arm would normally go, it's off center, which normally wouldn't be that big of a deal but it's, it's off quite a bit because the arm will wind up sitting right about here. Um, but anyway, it, it's also the other, other reason you'll notice it's just too wide from front to back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set up the servo in the same fashion as we did for the steering servo you can see there, and we're just gonna put it on the opposite side and that should uh, take care of the, uh, of the installation process. So more to come. Hi friends, as we continue update here on the fuselage, you can see we've got our elevator servo installed. It's the servo there on the left, and you can see it's installed in the exact same fashion as the steering servo, which is the servo there on the right. And you can see it's just functioning just perfectly. There's up, there's down. And we're on a canard, everything is, work, is reversed. Down is up, up is down. And there you go. So working perfectly. We're using, by the way, the same thing. We're using the same um, put type of push rod, the Hangar 9 titanium push rod. Uh, the connector is for a 440 rod, but it's got a 256 uh, socket head that goes into the servo arm, as you can see right there. And works great. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update here, I just wanna get a couple quick, quick shots of the instructions. Uh, there's just some things on here that I'm not going to be doing, but I, in case someone out there is building the plane, maybe they do want to do it. Number 38 is what we're looking at right here. Let me just show you. So basically, it gives you the ability to go ahead and put uh, some uh, 1 16th uh, balsa, and you can on the sides of the gear here, okay, on both sides. And here's a little diagram on the plans to show you what they're, what they're talking about, how you would sandwich it. Okay. Now, in addition, um, there's a couple other things that I'm not doing, but if you're building the planes, a plane according to plans, then you'll need the information. Of course, the most important right off the bat, whether is, is the throws, and you can see it right there, okay? And then you can see when it talks about radio installation. And, you know, keep in mind this is a plane from the 80s, so there's some things in here that is a little bit on the old side. Of course, now we have our computer radios, which we didn't really have back then, but... Um, I'm not going to be really using any of that radio setup for the most part because obviously I'm using direct drive servos. Now let me take you to another page real quick. I just want to talk about it just for a second. Um, hang on, this is 
little bit more on the instructions here pertaining to the radio setup there. Anyway, uh, wheel pants construction. Now, I'm not going to go through and build the wheel pants at all. You can do it if you want to. Um, I remember building them, and I just remember them being a real pain in the butt. So I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you what it does come with. So in the box here, we have these pre-shaped wheel pants that are balsa. You can see them there. And in addition to those, we also have these die cut plywood pieces. And they get, and, and the, the, the balsa gets sandwiched between those die cut plywood pieces, okay? And that's how you make the wheel pants. You do a lot of sanding. It's, and then you got, you have, you have to glass them. You have to glass them. There's no two ways around it. Don't bother. There, it's, it's garbage. Take the wood, use it for scraps, use it for something else. Don't even bother. I lucked out, happened to be in a hobby shop down in, um, well, down in, in Orlando called Graves RC, greatest hobby shop ever. I'm, if you're in Florida, on vacation, down in Orlando, go. Anyway, they had these hanging up. These are really nice, really nice fiberglass wheel pants. And the crazy part about it, they're almost identical to, to, the, uh, to the full size. That's the great thing about it. And they have this wonderful little notch here. So when you put the gear in there, it, the, it sits flush. So you have a nice aerodynamic um, no, wheel pan. Really is what you have. Anyway, the only issue that is this. Let's, uh, I bring up the wheel pans because we're, we're doing electric. And as you can see, I've got wheels in here. These wheels are definitely much bigger than what's on the plans. The problem is when you're running electric is you need a larger prop. And I'll give you a good example. So let's look at the quarter scale, uh, long easy over here. This is swinging a 1610 four blade. Had I put a two blade on there, it would have been an 1810 and it would have struck the ground. So to get proper clearance, I couldn't use the three inch wheels that came with it. I had to go through and use these big giant uh, Dubro five inch wheels in order for it to get proper ground clearance. Because remember, the plane's gonna go through, it's gonna pitch up on takeoff and of course on landing as well. So we don't want a prop strike. So that's the difference here. See with this plane, it, normally it would have used a 10-6 on the nitro engine. But because we're running the um, because we're running the 46 size, it's going to take roughly about a 13 to 14 um, size two bladed propeller. Now I'll try to hunt and peck and try to find a four bladed. But in order for there to be proper clearance without without a strike, we have to use the larger wheels. And sadly, sadly, obviously before I realized that I had purchased these, and these would look great on there. They would look really nice, and it's a huge step saver because nowadays you can pick up inexpensive fiberglass wheel pants. Anyway, with that out of the way, for those that want to build the wheel pants for construction, as I mentioned before, it's right here as well. Now, in addition, um, we're going to move on to mounting the wing to the fuselage and getting that all set up. I'm waiting for a new thin wing servo because even though this is brand new, it doesn't work. So I just had to order up a new one. So it's going to take a couple days. Anyway, that's where we're at at this time. We're going to go ahead and get over to mounting the wing to the fuselage. And then we'll go ahead. Whoops. I'm going a little too fast for the plans there. Uh, mounting the wing to the fuselage. And then we'll get on to doing the, the canopy as well. And it does talk, how to, talk about how to tint the canopy. I'm not going to tint it. But I will go ahead and make sure it's attached. All right. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue your update here on part three of the fuselage build, we are mounting the wing. So let's talk about a couple things that we need to do. First of all, um, you'll notice I've got some blue tape running from the rear to the front to the rear. What I've done directly over top of the tape, just right on that very edge where my fingernail is, is the center line for, uh, for F, um, F5. That other edge of the tape right up there is also, as you can see, directly over top of the center line for F2. Now you'll see the fuselage half mark right there, or not the fuselage, the wing half mark. That tape has to line up with that. And when we look down like that, you can see just barely, that is pretty much dead center right there. 
Now, not only are we looking at that, but we've got to look at it in terms of being level. So, if you look carefully at the top of the wing and the elevator, you'll notice it's pretty damn close. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And you can see it's really very, very, very close. You look at the end of the canard really is what I'm looking at, not the elevator itself. It's, it's pretty much dead on for the most part. So we've got it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drill some holes. Oh, one thing I wanna mention. Let me zoom in here. So if you remember when we built the fuselage, we had to put in the plywood doublers. Well, I did not know when I was supposed to put in the plywood doublers that were supposed to extend one eighth inch above the balsa sides of the fuselage. Let me show you what I mean on the plans here, if I may. If you look carefully, you'll see the dotted line there. That represents the doubler. It's supposed to extend one eighth inch up. And it did not say that anywhere at all with regards to um, regards to the instructions. It only said it here. There you go. If you look right there, the 1 16th inch ply doubler between F2 and F3 protrudes 1 8th inch above the balsa sides, providing a flange which prevents lateral movement of the front of the wing. So that, because that, I only had it up about a 16th, obviously it was not doing what it needed to do. So what I did is I had to cut a little extra 1 16th, put it on top of that curved doubler, and then I just went ahead and reinforced it on the inside of the fuselage with some additional 1 16th ply, and that works great. So that provides a better uh, stability in terms of lateral movement. So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move on to, to drilling, and we have a good fit. So what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna drill a pilot hole. One, th You can see it right there, number four. That's what we're gonna wind up doing. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. All right. Here goes nothing, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue update, we're looking at step five. I just wanna show that to you real quick here before I show you what we did. Um, so uh, what we did is we went, the wing was in place. Whoops, we went ahead and we drilled the holes. Okay, um, using 1 16th. I began, began to widen this hole, realized I think I might've made it too big, but that's okay, we'll, we'll fix it. But anyway, we've got the holes here in the fuselage and of course over here in the wing as well. You can see them down there on all four blocks. So we've got a few more steps that we need to do and then we're gonna go ahead and we'll get the wing mounted in place, uh, uh, ready to go. So anyway, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, we have got the holes drilled and tapped uh, in the fuselage and the holes drilled in the wing. So we are ready to mount the wing. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, here's something very exciting. You <laughs> feel like a little kid. <laughs> the wing is on. Yay! Whoop, 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 whoop. Doing an airplane dance. Doing an airplane dance. <laughs> anyway, very good. All right, wing is on and we're moving along. More to come. All right, friends, as we continue your update here on the fuselage bill, we've added the hatch back here. Now, typically this hatch would just be put in place if you've got a gas tank in the back. Um, I was gonna glue it, but then I realized that when you look here, you can see it would have blocked, you see only two of the blind nuts right there. It would have blocked the other two and I wouldn't be able to get to it. So anyway, I just added the hatch anyway. So anyway, just wanna show you that. We used a little uh, quarter inch spruce. You can see it right down there uh, for the rails to mount it to. And this is just one eighth inch up also. So, all right, more to come.